Guys, before we start today's video, hit the pause button, go to the website right here, and get you a hoodie. I have all of the hoodies discounted heavily. We are getting rid of winter and we are ushering in summer. And once these hoodies are gone, they are gone for good. They are super comfortable, super high quality, but we will not be doing another run of these. So if you guys want a Logan built hoodie with the 30 under 30 on it, now is your time to get it. They've never been cheaper. And once they are gone, they are gone. I also have long sleeve shirts discounted as well. So we could just get rid of all that winter and bring in the summer air so we can go racing. All right, on to the video. So today we're gonna to pick back up with our drive shaft conversation. And we're gonna talk about the front drive shaft on your four wheel drive truck today. Uh, there's several things to discuss with the front drive shaft, just like with the rear drive shaft. Uh, but the first thing we're gonna start talking about is really the three different types of drive shafts uh, as far as design goes that you're going to use for a front drive shaft. So the most common design would be like what the OEM is, uh, which is basically a drive shaft with a slip yoke made into the drive shaft, and then it has a double cardinal, uh, basically double U-joint at the transfer case side. The main reason that that drive shaft was made that way uh, was for the drive line angle with the trucks. Uh, because the trucks set up naturally higher, uh, even in stock form, you have a lot of front drive shaft angle and just a straight drive shaft with no double cardinal uh, wasn't going to cut it. It was going to create a vibration and it was going to be very hard on the U-joints. So by adding essentially three U-joints into the front drive shaft, uh, it was able to cut down on all that. The drawback, of course, for racing is that that is a really heavy drive shaft. Uh, even though they're small in diameter, the double cardinal part is very heavy, the slip yoke part is very heavy, uh, and so you end up with a lot of rotating mass, and then you end up with three U-joints that can go bad as opposed to two. Uh, typically, with drag racing, uh, we're talking about getting the trucks lower. Uh, That's just one of many reasons why you want to get your truck as low as possible uh, to help be able to get away from that stock style drive shaft in the front. Now, I know that there's a lot of guys that have gone really, really fast with a stock front drive shaft. But if you are trying to save as much weight as possible and you're trying to maximize what you have, get your setup as efficient as possible, there are better ways to do it. And so that's where we get into talking about uh, some different materials and kind of get into some transfer case stuff a little bit as well. But we're gonna stick with mainly talking about uh, stock transfer case stuff because most of you guys are on a stock style transfer case. So if you have your truck low enough, uh, one of the things that you can do is you can go to a, basically a one piece drive shaft, uh, but it will have a slip yoke made into it. So there are several different options for that. Uh, if you're wanting to build an aluminum drive shaft in the front, Sonex has some really nice uh, slip setups. Uh, there's another company that the name is escaping me right now, uh, Detroit maybe, has some aluminum slip setups. Uh, and then of course, you know, steel is always an option as well, depending on uh, how serious you are about saving weight. Uh, but the only way you can really do that is to get the truck low enough to get your angle right. Uh, and the best way for me to explain that is to actually put up a picture from the internet here and go over each one of these and explain uh, the different situations that you would find your truck in and what is optimal. So let's take a look at that. So this first one here at the top uh, that says perfect in line. This is going to be like what we discussed with the rear drive shaft where the pinion and the yoke is on the exact same plane. So you get a nice, perfectly straight drive line. Uh, like, like the picture says, it says low strain, no vibration. That is the most ideal way, uh, but it's not going to be achievable with the front drive shaft. So the next best possible scenario is to have a parallel U-joint setup like this second one here. You can see where it says moderate strain, minimal vibration. Uh, so that is what we're shooting for. And I will explain to you how we can get to that a little bit later in the video here. 
What you don't want to do is when you start getting into these weird high strain angles like this next picture here. Uh, this one is actually opposite of what you would run into because your transfer case yoke is never going to be like that. It's going to be like the picture here at the bottom uh, that says absolutely not. The angle on the transfer case side is pointing up because the rear drive shaft is pointing down. And then the front pinion is pointing in the opposite direction. And that is not what you want. So right there, you can see why uh, the higher your truck is as far as ride height goes, the harder it is going to be to get that optimal angle that you're looking for. The other problem with four wheel drive racing is referencing back to the last drive shaft video. If you have your, from the crank to the pinion, if you've got that on a perfectly straight plane and say that's at a five degree angle, well, you are married to a five degree angle on the yoke on your transfer case side. But the rear end in the front, the front axle, uh, it could be independent of that. It's not necessarily going to be on the same plane as the rear drive line. So you might have five degrees of downward angle on this yoke uh, out of the front of the transfer case, but your front axle might be, you know, positive three degrees the other way. And so it might end up looking like this. And as we saw in that picture, that's a no-no. So this is where it gets back into talking about front caster. Uh, and remember that conversation if you've been paying attention to all these videos that I've been putting out about caster trumping pinion angle until pinion angle becomes a problem. Uh, well, if you haven't seen that, go back and watch some of those front axle, front four link setups because this will make it all make a lot more sense. Uh, but this is where it's nice to have a four link in the front because now we can change the caster. We can lay the caster back. And when we lay the caster back, not only is that going to improve the truck going straight, but it is going to improve this angle on the pinion as well. So ideally, no matter what, we want, if we have five degrees of layback on this yoke coming out of the front of the transfer case, Ideally, we want to have five degrees layback on the front axle. So that way our drive line is in the least amount of stress possible. Again, there's no, in a lot of situations you can't get it perfect. It, it might be a couple degrees off. Uh, unless you're building a front axle where you can set the pinion angle and the caster independent of each other, that's really going to be about the only scenario that you can get those two exact. The other problem is, is that we're talking about stock transfer case stuff. You're married to a certain amount of drop on the transfer case. Uh, if you were able to change that drop a little bit, that can help with the swing of where this yoke is on the transfer case. And you could, you know, you're still going to be stuck at that five degree on this side. But if you swing it down a little bit, it makes it easier to get this closer to the same plane. Uh, the problem with that is that uh, with, you know you could run an adapter where it would allow you to reclock the transfer case, but typically on OEM style transfer cases, the center line measurement from the main shaft to the front output shaft uh, is usually around nine, nine and a half inches. And so as you drop the transfer case more, that's moving the drive shaft closer to your transmission. And it's also getting the drive shaft in line or out of line, I should say, with the front pinion uh, on the rear end housing. So there's really only so much that you can play with in this window to optimize it the best that you can uh, with, without you know, going to maybe some aftermarket style transfer cases, but mainly the big benefit isn't even there. It would be in doing a front axle to where you could set the pinion independent of the caster. So if you are running a one piece front drive shaft or a drive shaft with just a single slip yoke and you've eliminated the double cardinal, then you want to keep an eye on those U joints. Uh, if this is five degrees and this is three degrees the other way and they're two degrees wrong or worse, um, at some point your U-joints will become a wear item. So you're gonna wanna make sure that uh, you're 
kind of continually putting that into your routine of checking it. And uh, the worst part about that is really to check it. You got to pull the front drive shaft out and feel how the U-joints feel. But uh, I'm telling you, it is very important because uh, I have had a front U-joint failure before uh, from overlooking it and making a lot of passes. Not with my truck, uh, with JP's truck, but uh, it could have ended much worse than what it did, but it tore up a lot of stuff. Uh, so if you don't have, even if you do have your stuff in line exactly how it needs to be, uh, the front drive shaft on a four wheel drive is something that you really need to put into your regular maintenance schedule as far as checking the U-joints goes. So now let's talk a little bit about diameter. Uh, you guys know that I like an aluminum drive shaft. We talked about carbon shafts in the last uh, little bit and how you only use those for a certain critical speed. Uh, and the front drive shaft is typically so short that the critical speed is astronomical. Uh, like the calculation for my front drive shaft at a three and a half inch tube, the critical speed's like 30,000 RPM. So it's extremely high. Uh, so the only thing you need to like really pay attention to on that as far as running calculations is just the, the torque. Uh, but once again, it's so short that if your rear drive shaft is a four inch aluminum and all the numbers calculate out on that, you are more than good with a three and a half inch aluminum in the front. And honestly, I think that pretty much most people could get away with a three inch aluminum in the front, uh, depending on your truck and how low it is and all these angles that we've been discussing, you might be in a situation where you have to run a three inch uh, my three and a half inch tube is extremely close to the transmission pan rail. Uh, and so if I change the ride height, you know, really much more than what it is on the truck currently, I probably wouldn't be able to run that drive shaft. So that is something to keep in mind when you are going to measure for your drive shafts. And then just like before, uh, measuring for the drive shaft is going to be the same as like what we talked about before. So I'm not really going to get into that. Your drive shaft shop might have a specific way that they want you to measure for the front drive shaft. But for the most part, any three and a half inch aluminum tube is going to be more than sufficient for what you need. And that's also going to be your lightest option. The style transfer cases that we run and that I build, uh, we use a slip yoke on the front output shaft and that allows us to just run a conventional one piece drive shaft. That is the lightest option and it's also uh, the cheapest option as far as building an aluminum front drive shaft goes because it's just one piece. Also keep in mind that when we're talking four wheel drive stuff, you are splitting the power between the front and rear shaft. So if your numbers look like they could be a little borderline on torque yield, uh, critical speed is still critical speed. So that's important for the rear shaft. But if it looks like, you know, you think like, ah, I don't know, it might be borderline because of the torque I make. Keep in mind that you're splitting that up between the front and rear. So it's probably more than fine. So that's all I got for this one, guys. Just wanted to take a few minutes here tonight and talk to you guys about front four wheel drive drive shafts, uh, some of the options that are out there and the ways that we do it. So if you like this kind of stuff, drop a comment below, let me know. If I missed something that you wanted to hear, also drop a comment, let me know. If you're new here, click that like button, click the subscribe button. And like always guys, we will see you on the next video.